What if I told you this backpack was one of the most powerful pieces of equipment in the universe? Don't believe me? I'll prove it. Let's get into the nitty gritty in the first in my new video series, Overthinking It. Banjo's Backpack. What is this thing made out of? It has so many abilities. Is it just a backpack? Nay, I say. On the surface, Banjo's Backpack demonstrates a few core things. First off, it fits on his back and doesn't seem to even be a burden on him ever, no matter what it's carrying. And it holds things such as Kazooie, but even further than that, in Tui he can pick up other characters like dinosaurs and aliens, regardless of their size. He can also go inside it himself in various ways to protect himself from all kinds of things. Acid, lava, water, and somehow he can breathe as well while being submerged in any of these. Not to mention, it also protects him from physical things like thorns and spikes. How does it do all of this and still just be a backpack? What's it made out of? Is this magic? Science? I think to answer these questions of why the backpack can do all this, we need to first look at Banjo himself as a character and measure his physical traits and abilities to see where he stands without the backpack. If you look up what kind of bear Banjo is, Banjo is stated to be a brown honey bear, which honey bear is another name for the Malayan sun bear. At first glance, you see this doesn't actually look a whole lot like Banjo at all, so naturally I dug a little deeper and went down a large rabbit hole, or bear hole, if you will, I guess. Even having people say Banjo is a kinkajou. Clearly, this is not the case, just looking at them. Finally, I came to terms with what you have to understand. The brown honey bear was actually a made-up species like how Kazooie is a regal. Knowing that, we can assume that Banjo is in fact based off of a brown bear, and more specifically, the European brown bear, since Banjo's creators were based in the UK. This looks like a much more fitting match based on appearance. So now, armed with a specific species, we can now get into the stats. The European brown bear comes in at a height maxing out at about 7 feet while weighing a max of 770 pounds. Jimmy Kolb, as of this video, is the current world record holder for bench pressing, able to lift a whopping 1,350 pounds, which is incredible and far more than I could ever hope or want to lift. He weighs 326 pounds. Let's apply the math. 1350 divided by 326 is roughly four pounds of weight per body pound. Apply that ratio to the stats of the European brown bear and we get a max lift of 3080 pounds. Dang, Banjo got them gains going on. So it's no wonder his backpack doesn't slow him down with Kazooie inside. It's also important to note that bears in general have thick skin and often when fighting amongst each other they get clawed and it doesn't really do much. This is what makes them such dangerous predators. Therefore, we can assume that physically, Banjo can take attacks and damage far greater than a normal person could. Now that we've established Banjo's physical features as a species, let's talk about the backpack. The use in the original game is obvious. Banjo carries Kazooie, which on the surface is whatever. Yeah, Kazooie just lives in his backpack. Big deal. Well, look closer, my friends. It is, in fact, a very big deal. Why? Because that backpack is small. Mark Bedridge, a studio boss at Rare, was quoted as stating Banjo's backpack was inspired by Rondosiru backpacks that Japanese children carry around. Looking at them, you can definitely see a resemblance. The dimensions of these backpacks are roughly 13 by 9.8 by 6.7 inches. Now this poses a problem. If that backpack is 13 inches long, there is no way Banjo is as big as a real-life European brown bear. Using the measurements of the backpack and calculating that with how large Banjo is in comparison in-game, we get this. Roughly just under 3 feet. Wow, this is blowing my mind. Banjo is tiny, which actually makes Kazooie's height more likely. Kazooie is part of a made-up species of bird known as Breagles. According to the Banjo wiki, Breagles are based off of the real-life bird known as Hoitzin, which looking at a picture you can see a resemblance, so that seems pretty fair. As far as the size of the Hoitzin, they're roughly just over 2 feet long. 2 feet crammed into a 1 foot bag, but in comparison to Banjo's size with Kazooie, when out of the bag, this actually seems about right. So Banjo is a little bear. Guess his gains weren't as big as I thought. Let's take another looky poo at what Banjo's weight and lifting power would be based on his height. His weight calculated out is just somewhere in the realm of 300 pounds. And his lifting power would then be in the same ballpark number as the current world record. Still, it's a decent score and should mean his backpack still shouldn't give him trouble, at least the way he generally uses it. So now that we've established sizes and Banjo's strength, let's take a look at the material these backpacks are typically made out of. As far as I can tell, it varies, but often the backpacks are made of a leather-like material, our options being genuine leather, PVC leather, PU leather, leatherette, or vegetable oil leather. 
Banjo's backpack is able to offer him shielding to acid, lava, water, and thorns. Therefore, the material has to be very durable and offer a barrier of protection. On top of this, it also needs to be flexible and stretchy enough to accommodate the things Banjo puts inside it, which range from batteries to Kazooie to a small Styracosaurus. Yeah, no joke. I don't think anything would be stretchy enough for that. Nor would any of these materials mentioned offer the degree of protection Banjo is getting from acid or lava. Honestly, hardened leather would protect Banjo from spikes and such, but the water of all things poses a problem, especially over time to that backpack. If you look at when Banjo places something into his backpack, it gets notably bigger. Like the Cyracosaurus, for example, probably our largest example, Banjo's backpack seems to stretch and expand without any signs of stress, and after it's out, it reverts back to its former shape. Now you'd probably be saying, okay, it just has to be a material that can stretch around the dinosaur while offering him protection, right? Well, at first glance, yeah, that sums it up, but look closer. Look at the original size of the dinosaur, now remember the dimensions of the backpack? Now look at how much it stretches. These dimensions don't add up, which means that somehow the things in Banjo's backpack get condensed down or like it's some sort of pocket dimension. Now hear me out, this makes canonical sense by doing research into what happens when Kazooie goes into the backpack. The best example for this by taking a look at none other than Super Smash Bros Ultimate. By maneuvering the camera, we get a glimpse into the backpack and see that when Kazooie goes into the backpack, she shrinks down. That is the secret, my friends. Banjo's backpack is no mere backpack at all. It can shrink and manipulate the things that go inside it. So why does it stretch, you might ask? Well, it's simple. It does it based on necessity. So however much it needs to shrink, it will. You're probably confused by that comment and thinking you mean its shrinking ability is limited, right? And no, I don't mean that because of one thing. Banjo can carry things and it stretches out but then he can hop into his backpack while carrying things and it goes into its normal size not stretched. Simply put, it is aware of what it has and shrinks down accordingly as necessary. It doesn't have to shrink it down all the way, just as much as it takes to fit. Or, perhaps even, how much Banjo can carry. Now the question is, how does it shrink things? I'm glad you asked because there is an answer for that and it all makes sense. You'll notice in Kazooie that we never have an opportunity to put the things in our backpack besides what we assume is Kazooie and items. And you'll also need to take note that when Banjo transformed via Mumbo's magic, his backpack remains. Granted, his clothes too, but we're only concerned about the backpack, so just stay with me. What do these transformations do? Besides changing our physical appearance, they all do one important thing. Change our size. In fact, it's essentially why we need to use these transformations in the first place, to access areas we couldn't fit in before. Now fast forward into Tui, and the style of transformation changes, wherein Kazooie Mumbo transforms us with his wand, in Tui, we transform by jumping into a pool of magic water in Wombo's hut. This is what blesses Banjo's backpack with the abilities it has, the magic pink water. Which is why in Kazooie we could never put stuff in it. It wasn't drenched in this magical substance that can transform things, so it could only fit Kazooie and essentially the items we collect. Now, we've established why his backpack can fit all these things, but now we need to cover the other ability, ultimate defense. The answer is very simple here and has been staring us in the face the entire time. Gold feathers. Think about it, it makes sense. The golden feathers allow us to do the Wonder Wing, but if you take a closer look, as we use the Wonder Wing, the feathers are actually dropped. When inside the backpack, the feathers don't get dropped. It's as easy as that. So theoretically, the feathers are infinite as they can't get out of the backpack. Now we have solved most of the core things the backpack can do. It holds things by shrinking them down once entered into the backpack. It protects things inside indefinitely by having an everlasting supply of golden feathers. Now we just have to go over how Banjo can breathe inside it. And the answer can be solved by a basic science experiment that you can do in your kitchen. Take a glass and crumple up a paper towel. Put the paper towel in the glass and then push it down to the bottom of a water-filled container. Pull it back out and you'll find the paper towel is completely dry. This is an example of air pressure. Same idea in Banjo's backpack. Now if you figure that this will only last him a while before he suffocates on his own carbon dioxide, you'd be correct, except for these two facts. One, in Tui you never stay submerged in the backpack for that long. Even though you could technically, it's smaller areas you could easily get out of if need be. And two, that backpack shrinks everything down, so it's safe to assume it's constantly shrinking air into it like a small vacuum when it's open. This is actually backed up by how when Banjo goes to pick something up in his pack in Tui, it makes a little whoosh noise and you actually see it get sucked inside and it shrinks. Therefore, it has a ton of air molecules in it that have been shrunk down and now Banjo is too, leaving him lots of fresh air in his pack. Well, that's it. I think we solved the mystery. Banjo's backpack is insanely versatile and probably one of the most powerful items in video gaming history.
or am I overthinking it? Well, that's all I have for you today. Be sure to like this video so it gets shared around and spread the love of old game series like this. Also, punch that subscribe button and hit that noti bell so you'll catch my future uploads. Until next time, have a good one!